Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. The first topic in Chapter 10, Leisure, Recreation and the Growth of Leisure Activities. As always, you'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your exam, and today you need to be able to explain the terms leisure, physical recreation, play and sport, outline the factors that influence the recreational activities people take part in, and describe the factors that have influenced the growth of leisure activities. Leisure time can be defined as time spent away from work and free from obligations or responsibilities. What people choose to do in their leisure time is completely up to them, but today a vast number of people are committing at least some of their leisure time to exercise. There are three terms which describe the different types of physical activities people choose to engage in during their leisure time, and they are physical recreation, sport and play. Physical recreation is defined as a physical activity or pastime that promotes health, relaxation and enjoyment. Examples include jogging in the park to support your physical health, playing football with friends for enjoyment purposes, attending gym classes in an attempt to become fitter, or playing a round of golf on the weekend to relax after a stressful week at work. Sport, on the other hand, is an activity that involves physical exertion and skill, either as an individual or part of a team competing against another person or team. Sport is highly structured and often takes place through organised events and competitions. Performers follow established rules and the primary objective is to win. In contrast, play means taking part in a sport or activity for enjoyment. Winning is not important, and rules are often made up or adapted to suit the preferences of those involved. Fun, relaxation and social interaction are therefore some of the main reasons why people choose play over structured sport during their leisure time. Our second learning objective is to outline factors that influence the recreational activities people take part in. There are a number of reasons why people choose to get involved in certain activities over others, and you need to be able to explain how the following seven factors influence our decisions. Number one, age affects our preferences and physical capabilities. For example, older people are likely to avoid high intensity or contact sports, and instead prefer activities such as walking or golf that put far less stress on their body systems. Number two, Family can have a significant impact on your interests, values and choices, which is why we often see athletes following in their parents' footsteps and siblings competing together at the highest level. Number three, where you live, including the geography, climate and culture, influences the activities you're likely to participate in. For example, ski jumping facilities can only be found in certain places and in certain countries. If you don't have access to mountains and snow, then it's very difficult to get involved. Number four, your socio-economic status may restrict you from being able to access certain recreational activities. Skiing, golf, horse riding and sailing are expensive pursuits that many people simply can't afford to take up. Number five, people in a peer or friendship group often have similar interests and backgrounds and can influence each other to behave in certain ways. If your peer group approves of or encourages you to take part in something, you're more likely to do so. Number six, the availability and standard of facilities has a big impact on your choices. For example, if you don't have easy access to a swimming pool or squash court, it's far less likely that you'll take up these activities in your leisure time. Our final factor is interests, which simply explains that we're more likely to take part in activities that spark our interest as opposed to those we care less about. For example, those who enjoy being around nature may be drawn to outdoor activities such as hiking or trail running. In recent years, the leisure industry has grown enormously, with more people involved than ever before, and the global gym industry now worth an estimated $100 billion. There are many reasons behind this growth and we'll take some time now to explain some of the factors involved. Firstly, people generally have more leisure time today than they did in previous years, giving them the freedom to pursue their interests. This shift was due to several factors, including a reduction in working hours, more holidays, earlier retirement for many, and a general increase in the number of people in part-time and temporary work. Advances in household technologies such as washing machines and dishwashers also free up free time that would otherwise have been spent on chores such as cleaning and washing clothes. 
At the same time, people are becoming more aware of the health benefits of leading an active lifestyle, thanks to the role of the media, advances in scientific research, and government-backed health promotion campaigns. Standards of healthcare have also improved, with modern medical operations allowing the elderly and injured to regain their mobility and return to exercise. Our next factor relates to the growth of the media, which has not only helped us to better understand the health benefits of exercise, but has also sparked the interest of millions through its vast coverage of sports and physical activities. In recent years, travel methods have also improved, with better road and rail networks and a rise in vehicle ownership. This means that certain leisure activities that were previously too far away to access are now within easy reach of many of us. Our final factors relate to the cost of equipment and the availability of facilities. Equipment costs have dropped significantly due to mass production and advances in technology, which of course means that more of us are able to afford what we previously couldn't. On top of this, leisure centres, parks, swimming pools and sports facilities are becoming more common and sophisticated, meaning our options are varied and extensive. Now you've just covered everything you need to know on leisure, recreation and the growth of leisure activities. Double check that you understand everything you need to and come back next time for the second topic in chapter 10 on the sports development pyramid. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you in the next one.